Hey coach, Mark Hart here with System Basketball. On today's video, we have coach Paul Kelleher of the Ireland national team 18U head coach. He's going to be sharing with us how to build your offense through tempo. So I'm going to present on tempo to build an offense. And we're also going to talk a little bit about defense um, and how we can transition from that in terms of our tempo. Um, so I have some clips as well that I'm going to share. Um, but um, as I said, this is going to be about tempo to build an offense. Um, I just got to move this, sorry. There we go. Um, so yeah, so building building our offense with with tempo, um, and I guess two things. Uh, one, uh, when we talk about creating our offense, we want to when we talk about momentum space, it's about the space that we have between the offense and the defender. Um, and I think from a defensive perspective, we've always talked about take away the momentum space. So trying to flip it the other direction um, is something I'm really trying to work on right now with, with, in terms of developing a little bit more. So we want to be able to have momentum space on the catch to be able to influence where we want to go. So everything that we've done in the past has been about turning heads and we talk more with as we, as we go through the presentation. But what we want to try and do with our offense is have a primary alignment, whether that's whatever we, whatever that is. And we'll talk about that in the next slide, um, whether it's four outs and five out and stuff like that. But we want to, no matter what, be able to flow into actions from our primary line uh, to be able to keep it fluent for the players, as opposed to having a number of different alignments um, where there's a confusion, we lose those three or four seconds and we lose the momentum space, which is the advantage to be able to attack the defense. And then obviously having defensive schemes where we, whether it's um, transition D, how are we attacking that, whether it's pressing, whether it's defensive actions um, and, and uh, that area right there. So where do we start? For me, I think we start in the primary offensive alignment. Which one are you, which one are you going to do? Is it the four out one in? Is the five out? Is it three out two in? Um, for us, we have, in terms of four out, we have a T, a T formation, which is a bit off from the traditional four out, which is two slots and, and two long corners. And we'll talk about that in, in a while. In terms of defensive, um, alignments, your man-to-man, -man, your zones, your pressing. So which one of those are you primarily in? So that, that way then the players can transition from the offense into defense where there's less thinking and therefore we can do multiple actions out of that. And as I said already, it's how we transition from one end of the floor to the next and having those primary alignments to be able to dictate the tempo we want to play at. Um, the definite Do we want to have a definite action against the defense? Or do we want to have multiple actions where the defense doesn't really know what we're trying to do um, and go from there? What we're going to start on right now is our primary offense alignment. So in terms of what you want from your offense, um, and we talk about these four are areas as, as we progress through the, through the, through the talk, um, but holding space and cutting. And I think that's a major thing for for all of us right now is when do players cut? How many players cut at any one time? How do we hold space in the three point line? And what are the cues for us to cut? And when do we put the timing of breaking the three point line? Um, and I guess when we break the three point line, what are we trying to achieve? Are we looking to post up? Are we looking to finish cuts and finish the rim? Are we looking to free up the next guy? Um, and that we'll talk about that as well. Momentum space. How can we do this? Is it from our tempo? Is it from transition? Is it from other weak side actions? Is it on ball actions? Um, but the most important thing is for momentum space to be effective, having distance between the guy with the ball and the guy away from the ball. And sometimes we're clogged and sometimes we have that extra bit of space. But when we have momentum space, we have that area where we can attack and get into it and get back out again. And that's something where we want to attack from. 
another debate, rim runner versus non rimmer We call those pipe runs. And I think with, for us, we've been, with being such a small federation, it's worked really well for us in terms of having a rim runner. And it's caused turning heads, which is part of what we spoke about earlier. And I think when you turn heads, it helps you gain advantage of the offense. Defenders don't know where they are. They're scrambling for their, for their players. So I think it's very important that we talk about a rim runner and how effective that can be. And we have a few examples of that in a while. If we don't have a rim runner, where's the defense? Is the defense in front of us? Now, how do we operate left and right? You know, if we're in, if we want the defense to maintain and we want to be a slower tempo team, that's something we have to be aware of that the defense will be in front of us. And how do we initiate the offense to gain the momentum space from that? And then obviously the turning heads. How do we do it? Is it with actions? When do we do it in terms of our tempo, slow versus fast? And who? Do we try and get, get the ball to in terms of when we turn the heads or go to guy or is everybody involved? And then how do we piece it all together and the timing and how we do that? And that's something I guess that is very hard, especially for younger players. But as they transition through from youth to, to senior, that's something that they can get better at regardless of the alignment that they're in. So for us, our alignment is what we call a T formation. Um, and as you can see here on the left-hand side, or four fives are on that pipeline, which is what, what we'll talk about the spots here on the, on the right-hand side in a second. But our four five, so it doesn't matter which one of those is first on the floor and which one is trailer, to us we treat them both the same. And then obviously we want to flatten the defense, which is what we talked about in a while, and we show some clips on that as well, in terms of the two getting to the corner and the three getting to the corner. For me, um, that allows our point guard or whoever has it, our ones and twos we generally treat the same, but they can attack any side of the floor. My issue with the, with the slots is that when you have a trailing slot of a forward, it's, uh, it's limiting the options of the point guard and they have to attack the open slot. So for us, when we do it this way, we have the option of going both sides and that allows our, our, um, our guards to be able to see where the space is and attack it with momentum and attack the momentum space for us. And that's something that we, we really wanna identify. You see here we've got hugging sidelines. We've got our pipeline here down the middle, and this spot right here, point pipe, is is massive for us. Um, and then because that's our trailer where our four or five will end up, and they're the reversal guy as well. Our wings, we call this option or this spot here the tunnel, and that's something that we try and make sure we try and get to in terms of attacking from the wings because it gives us the best option of forcing help defense, kicking it out, getting reversals, but also finishing at the rim. Um, and a better angle to use the glass and stuff like that. So that's a, a primary area that we want to try and attack from. And obviously then we have the channel in behind, which everybody calls the baseline drive or whatever it is, but we have the, we, we call it channel. Um, the deep slots um, are our elbows, but are no man's land. So that's a massive thing for us in terms of momentum space. When we're attacking that momentum space, so if we've got a long corner guy here and we have our point pipe, and if we and we'll show some Euro ball screen stuff uh, later on in the presentation. But if we leave this um, spot here, now our point pipe can attack no man's land, or last up guy can attack no man's land, but we want to get out of there. Um, and we, you know, it's a bit like what we call, um, you know, in, in war times where there was no man's land and everybody was, so if you're in no man's land, you're, you're dead and you're hurting our offense. So that's something that we, we really talk about. So, in terms of holding space and cutting, uh, we, we speak an awful lot about see ahead, it's not a man back door. See a shoulder, that's our holding space. Chest to chest, so there's two options in the chest to chest. We can either drift high and, and play a high offense, or we can sprint in the space, again, where we, where we attack that. But the most important thing for us is always being in an open passing lane. And when we are in an open passing lane, we can give laser passes, which now creates scrambling defense. So terminology is massive for us. Uh, we'll just show um, three sections of, of clips here now. So this one here is when we see the back of a head, and this is our, our options of cutting. So you'll see it here. So right now this defender see our offense sees the defender's head, and now we're attacking all this momentum space in here, and we're able to give a laser pass. Same here. 
So when you see here now, there's going to be four defenders turn the back of the heads. One, two, three, and four. Straight off the bat, offensive guy is going to attack the channel because there's four backs to the head, and that's the RQ. Apologies. There we go. And now everybody's scrambling, and we can get that return on the back of the head. Here you're going to see two things. One, which is what our next clip is going to be about, staying on the three-point line when we see a shoulder. But now all of a sudden you see we have a back of the head. Poor Miss Layup, but we got the option to, to give a laser pass in the open floor. So even when we're pressing, again, we see a back of the head, we're into space. Now we're forcing the help defender. And now we got it right here. So that's very important for us in terms of the back of the head. So anytime we see a back of the head, we're automatically cutting. In terms of holding space and on the three-point line, the three-point line is, is obviously a huge part of the offense. So one of the things that we want to make sure is that we have the, moment, the space where we can hold. What you're going to see here is the first one here. So as you can see, he sees a shoulder. He slides the three-point line, gets an open passing lane, and now we have a laser pass, and he can get into his rhythm, and the defense is scrambling on that. Same thing here. He sees this on the wing here. He sees a shoulder. He slides up. Laser pass, defender scrambling, long closeout, and now we have all that time to, to, to set ourselves. In transition, so again, we see a shoulder. We're not tempted to cut, and now all of a sudden the defender is off balance and they can't recover on that. We, we, get, the, we get what we want out of that. This one here is chest to chest. So we'll talk more about the momentum space here. So as we start... So now, our player here, he's blasting up. So he's all this space here is the momentum space. He's blasting up into that. So now, he's a little bit stuttering. It's chest to chest. You see all the momentum space in here? And now again, we're getting a laser pass. He went into an open passing lane. Here, right here now. So this space between the receiver and the defender, that's the momentum space. Anytime there's momentum space, we want to take advantage of that. So as we get to here now, the defender has to step up and that allows more space in behind. And now we're getting into, our, into, into more space. Defender steps into it, allows us to attack the momentum space off of this right here. Love little post pass. And we finish at the front of the room with the floor there. So by being a great receiver and having that space, I believe defenders have to step into the space, which then allows us to dictate the next bit of space. And I think that's hugely important. And there's momentum space everywhere in all of these. So anytime that we can force a defender to come up to us on a catch, if they're not there early, we think we can take advantage of that. So how do we teach it? So one of the things that we have, and we start here, so this is, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's 2v1. Um, and you see a bit of struggle in this a little bit in terms of making wrong decisions early, but there's some good decisions here as well. So albeit that he should have held space, he got in behind the defender. This one here again, so this is a struggle again. He should have cut back door not. But the next three here on this, or next two or three, we kind of do a decent job. Back of the head, defender can't recover. Um, and that's the big thing for, for us. So when we see a back of a head, we believe on a cut back of a head. And again, anything we do in the, in the lane is either a bounce pass or at the rim. So he held space. That was a good decision on that one. So that's, that's a 2v1. So again, it's, it's given the offense advantage. This is cat and mouse. See a back of a head. And that's an automatic cut. So here we're playing three on three. Defender gets in front. He closes the gate. So we're attacking here. See how we slide to the, and we give a laser pass. Two laser passes in a row. We're attacking the gap, back of the head. And now we hold space and we nail an open three. This is a, again, where we work on the skill early. We backdoor the screen and we cause confusion. And that gives us momentum to get in our space to get into. Again, we miss a shot, but again, the defense had to scramble at it. Working on our pro stop, reversal. And now again, we talk about, and we'll see some clips there on in terms of creating the isolation on the wings. We open, we get to an open passing lane. We're now using the ball screen. And again, watch number six sliding and sliding and sliding to get to a laser pass. 
and we relocate, which is huge. So we're constantly working on getting to an open passing lane and, if it, and relocating on that. I think they're vastly important for us. Mark, do we have any questions so far? No, we don't. All right, perfect. All right, so in terms of momentum space, how do we create with the ball and how do we create without the ball? And I think there's some big things here for us to, to, to work on. Anything here that's underlined, we're going to show some clips on. But in terms of dribble penetration, I think that's a massive thing in terms of getting into space. And then obviously we have, we have more things to go on. So this is a snake dribble. And this one here is we, again, watch the space he has on the catch. So the defender is, is, is reaching in, which now gives us a chance to attack this area here. No help. And then we get an easy little hook at the, at the front of the rim. So again, all anytime we catch and we have that momentum space is hugely, hugely important for us. And we need to take advantage of that. So we talk about quick choices. Um, anytime we catch, quick, quick, um, quick pass, quick shot, quick dribble. We do not want to have hesitation on those. So anytime that we have that momentum space, we want to attack it. Cross the grain. Again, we spoke with this earlier on in terms of where four fives are. And this, this for us is hugely important and it's a massive action for us. So now you see Paul Kelly is all that space. He is looking where the space is open and attacking that with huge momentum. And now we get into what they call the Gortet screen, which is, and again, there's more space in behind. So where's the momentum space? Again, you see four heads turning. And how do we take advantage of that? So now all of a sudden you got two v one here. You can see confused who takes who. But it's very important that, that, again, we talk about the momentum space and what advantage we're taking of that. Uh, ball reversal. This is a scheme, but you see the amount of space that we have. And this is a really good Dutch team. They actually beat us by about 50 in this game. But even at that, look at the momentum space they're giving us, which allows us to make easy passes. And every catch we made on that, possession we hurt them on it so i think anytime there's room between the ball and the defender you have to take advantage of the reverse of of the momentum space they're giving you whether it's with the dribble with the pass or with the shot and i think in that clip right there i thought you saw a good um situation of that this one here attacking the deep slot so we'll talk in a while about letting the defense dictate whether you should be a slow team or, or, or a team um, that pushes the basketball. For us, we don't let the defense dictate that. We want to be pushing it. Even if they're set defense, we want to be pushing it. And you'll see in a while when we talk about that, how we, how we let set defenses and what actions we utilize to be able to dictate getting the advantage off of the momentum that we have. But here you'll see. So again, we spoke about the spots earlier on. CJ gets into the deep slot. So when he gets into the deep slot, look how many heads cannot see the trailers behind. And look at the difference when the ball gets reversed. So he's attacking the deep slot. Nate's covered. Defenders are out of position. These three weak side defenders are out of position. And now they're scrambling on the next closeout. Again, lots of momentum space. And we take advantage of that to reverse it for an open three. So... You'll see that there's flattening defense on both with the ball and without the ball. So we have what we call dribble flatten and we have flattened without the basketball. So here you're going to see us flatten the defense to get some heads turned. And this is just a, a regular scrimmage game in, in, in Dublin. So you're going to see Nate here. He dribble flattens on the reversal and now into the post. And again, all our actions on that. And on that one right there, you saw a lot of heads turning. So again, back of the head equals a, equals a back cut. So we, we followed all our principles on that one and, and all our cues. So if we go to the opposite of flattening without the ball, right? Now the defense is, is fairly well set on this one. We get an inbounds on it. And on the weak side, we get a reversal 
and then we flatten into the corner and they're scrambling to get there and we get an open three in the corner. So flattening the defense forces a couple of things for us. It forces the defense to get turned their chest to the, de- to the end line, which means that on the reversal and we show a replay action in the wild. By attacking empty space and not waiting for the defense to settle, I think is massive in terms of getting heads turned and forcing defense to be out of position. So, and that's important that even when the defense is set, that with all the space that we have not to be slow and then let them get comfortable and get a, get a rest, we want to be pushing at all of the time. Um, including staggers. So for us here, let me just turn the volume down, sorry. For us here, we didn't really flatten it. We got lucky with flattening it off of a fumble, but on the reversal here, you see. So the defender let Dave catch it way too easy. So on the catch here, we're going to get a stagger. So now Dave got a dribble to build up the momentum to be able to attack it and get a foul. And that's, I think, very important is sometimes we, when we have space, we think that we have space to kind of see and, 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 and let the ball go side to side. But for us, we want to pull a defender on their heels when we have that momentum space. And that's why it's very important that we catch it away from the defense to go at them, put the defense on their heels, and then we can attack them whichever way they want. And by getting a weak side stagger, that allows the isolation one-on-one. So we spoke about getting to open passing lanes. And here we, we talk about the pipe in the pipe. So we really want to be ahead of the defense. And I think for us, this has been a massive part of our offense for the last number of years. So while the defense has two back, it's poor defense, but it's also something that we put pressure on them to make decisions. And I think by having a rim runner all the time, it's putting that pressure on the defense all the time. So who's he taking one in a 2v1 situation? And for us, that's huge. Having a pipe runner all the time. And you saw it a while ago by when we attacked deep slot, you know, even if we don't have a rim runner, that trailer on that pipe allows us to get reversal. And that's a massive part of our offense in terms of having a point pipe runner. So in terms of, you know, full court against the transition defense, you know, I believe that if you're constantly on the attack, constantly on the attack, there's more room to create momentum space for you to have the advantage in the offense all the time. There's more head turning and there's better chance of you as a, offense controlling the defense and hence controlling the momentum space in terms of the half court it's a tighter area to create the advantage and therefore less momentum space and most likely better defensive teams will take away that pass and now you have to initiate the uh, offense a little bit different there's more actions probably required and then more chances of defense controlling the momentum space in the half court if that's the type of offense that you want to have and there's either way i don't think there's anything wrong with either style but i think it's important that we understand how to create the momentum space whichever style that we're utilizing so this clip here is how we flow into it so again we get the rebound the defense is is transitioning but by the time the ball gets there it's relatively set so again we had a post entry to start it again we slide to an open passing lane another one now we get a quick reversal 0.5 offense boom we're getting that clo- long close out and then we got on the glass. So again, we initiated the offense, albeit the defense was relatively set. There was one trailer on that. So I, we didn't let the defense being set stop us from being aggressive in terms of getting into our offense. So that's the question, I guess, that we pose. Are you going to allow the style of, of, of defense affect how you initiate your off, offense? So for us, we want to be able to, anytime we bring the ball down the floor, on our slot lines. We want to have multiple options. Are we going to get into across the grain? Are we going to hit the corner to flatten the defense? Are we going to, you know, reverse it through the point pipe? So there's no real definite answer for us. So we are not letting the defense dictate the tempo that we want to play at. Obviously for a small federation like us, you know, length is a massive part for us. So that's on the defensive end, but on the offensive end, we do not want their defense dictating to us on what we want to do offensively. A quick example in terms of a half court action that I believe creates momentum space where we have that distance between the offense and uh, offense with the ball and offense without the ball. 
and obviously everybody's aware of the euro ball screen right now which is which is a massive part of, of what we do as well so here you're going to see multiple um actions here So here we get the reversal straight. So the first cut on the on the on the euro ball screen, we hit the back door on this one. So we got it was pretty good for us. But here again, we cut it. There's the momentum space, which now forced the defense, and we clear out to the weak side on the cut to allow an open post ball screen. On this one here, we don't clear out. We replace on the back side for a throwback, and we hit up a, a short jumper. But again, it's the momentum space that forced the defense. And here you see an open three, but it's the momentum space that causes confusion with the defense again another cut allowing momentum space to attack it with the dribble handoff and then we get that weak side by seeing a back of a head and we get the foul on the weak side here again we get that cut momentum space they take it away and now we're in a one-on-one -on, -one on the wing again and there's no weak side help on that so again by getting a cut on your ball screen where while there's no momentum space initially the cut allows us to get momentum space where we can blast up to the ball and we can attack with a dribble handoff, you know, without any interference from, a, from another defender and cause confusion on that cut. And, you know, is the, is the second defender away taking the cutter? Are they switching? Are they staying home? So it's just a small bit of confusion to help with the momentum space that we have. In terms of transition, this is an action that we utilize quite a, quite a bit um, and we call it a replay. So as you can see, we're going to flatten the defense here and we're going to, what some people call it a boomerang pass. We've been calling it replay for, I suppose, five, six years now. Um, but as you can see, this is a, a forward and he hits the flatten the defense and you can see the turn of the heads and that just allows us um, to get the replay where there's empty space for us to take advantage of. But we allow our forwards carry the basketball as long as they're on their pipeline. So... You know, and that allows our, our guards to continue getting their, to their uh, long corners to flatten the defense. And I just think that flattening the defense is a massive part of any offense. And especially if you're getting there ahead of the defense, that allows that force of the defense to chase with their chest to the end line. And therefore, the next pass is crucial. So when we, by attacking and flattening, we're attacking the space, we're creating the momentum, we're creating the tempo. And now the defense has to chase us rather than us dictate being dictated to by the defense. So now if we go to the opposite other end of the floor and from the defense, so if we want to create momentum space, we obviously want to take away the momentum space from a defensive perspective. Um, and the main ways, two main ways, obviously on ball defense, we call that the gate. So we want to keep the gate closed. And we believe if we can keep the gate closed and we can dictate that element of the momentum space, then you know, our defense would be pretty good. We always give up about three or four inches in terms of on ball and one pass away in terms of our guard spots. So that means that we have to put a bit more pressure just to kind of put a bit more control on that if we possibly can. And the second part is the fence. So if we're having a gate, we want to have that connection all the way around. Some people call it the frame, some people call it the bubbles. You know, it's, it's different things. But for us, it's the gate and the fence. And can we keep them connected to make sure we don't get pierced and hurt? So our on-ball teaching point is our sternum must be in line with the dribbling shoulder. And we believe that if we're in line with the dribbling shoulder, then we can always, yes, there's potential to get drop step, but if we can recover on that and get our sternum to the dribbling shoulder, therefore we'll always be in front and we'll always have the gate closed if we can do that. Lateral movement and the catch-up step. So if we do get turned, you know, abandoning all, all traditional lateral movement in terms of step slide, screw it, we're just getting back where catch up steps and we're sprinting to make sure that we get that sternum on the dribbling shoulder in terms of control and defense a couple of things that we can do passing lanes you know fundamental teaching point but obviously switch switching as well and you know, there's been that debate lately of is switching a lazy defense is you know is it non-aggressive we're very much a very aggressive switching um defensive team and we we want to switch to meet the ball we don't want to switch to a to a drop scenario which is what you know, people would have said in the past about us, but we're very aggressive. We want to switch to, to, to meet the ball. So we just show a couple of quick clips here in terms of dictating the defense. So here, I think this is important. So right now, I think we're, we're pretty well set. Tierns on the weak side here. Um, we're trying to get a back door, but we take away the passing lane. And for us, 
sorry, they're not allowed to go back. But for us, we call it the grandfather swing. So the old grandfather clock with the with the swinging pendulum, that's what we want to try and get between the change of hands. So we want to lose the ball for a split second and recover and keep keep the defender um, in front of us and see the defender. We believe that if we lose the defender, they can flare away and you know it's a harder job to, to recover to that. But if we see the defender, we think that on the pendulum swing of the, of the hands, we can see the basketball pretty quickly. So we lose it for a split second. But uh, we've got a good help defender here as well, which, which helped as well that if we did get caught in the back door, we had that situation here. And then we ended up getting the deflection and the steal. In terms of switching, so it's something that we practice a lot and we're, we're, we believe that we're quite aggressive on it. Um, so here we're actually going to see it nearly three switches. So the first one here, again, you can see a meet and now we're back into it and we're keeping the gate closed and you can see how long he has with his hands and then we're meeting the next guy again. Now, this I think is, is hugely important in terms of you know, we lost the defender for a split second and he had that space. And it was poor defense here, but we got there just to contest it, just about, but he got the shot off, just to put him off. But we should have never have been in that position where we lost him, lost him on this. Again, here we get a switch. We don't allow any momentum space. We're in a decent spot here. On ball defense is, is okay. And we drop here and we take away the momentum space on that, or we, we get that drop on it. So I think for us, um, getting a switch is massively important, or being an aggressive switching team. Taking away momentum space, will we ever create the tempo we desire if we just focus on the gate and the fence? So what we saw there a while ago was, you know, we're switching, we're keeping the fence pretty tight to the, to the, to the gate, you know, our gate is closed in terms of our on-ball defense. But I guess for us now, we want to be able to sometimes dictate the pace, get outside the fence. And what happens when we allow a split in the fence? How can we recover on that? So how do we create the tempo? I'll show two clips here, half court alignments and full court alignments in a second. But in terms of the man to man, pack line defense versus up the line, zone alignments, one is a one, three, one, two is a two, three, and three is a, a three, two. For, if you're a 2-3, sometimes the wings are back. So you're allowing that space in front of you an awful lot and you're dictating it. For With the 3-2, I think you, you can be much more aggressive in terms of taking away passing lanes, but obviously you've got more space in behind. So, you know, there's there's obviously pros and cons to, to each um, zone defense. In terms of ball screen, D, drop, ice, and jam. They allow the offense to come onto you. And therefore, how are you going to dictate the offensive tempo if you get a steal or a rebound where your players are aligned to be able to attack the space? When you're switching and you're trapping, you're, you're a bit higher or he and hedging. So therefore, the question I would ask is, which defense allows the offense to come onto you? And how are you going to run in a primary alignment if that's what you're doing? Or are you going to slow it down if you allow the defense to come onto you and you get the steal? Are you going to slow it down to be a scheme-oriented team? Or are you going to be a team that's going to get into a flow offense? And what's the better way of doing that? And then which defense allows you to dictate the pace? And what I mean by that is this. When you're meeting the ball high and you're getting those deflections of steals, there's more likely to be less defense in front of you and therefore... 1v0s, 2v1s are more likely to happen in terms of dictating the pace. So which ball screen defense is going to determine that? And, and for us, that's always been the determination of the mobility of the forwards we have in the team. We've always had aggressive guards, so that's not really been an issue. But in terms of our forwards, they've always dictated the tempo that we play that because of the ball screen defense that we're, that we're um, defending with. And then full court, man-to-man, -man, trapping run and jump versus a zone one two two versus a two two one now for us in the past a two two one has always been more of a containing press because the core the front corners haven't been able to be um trapped and stuff like that so you got to create trapping areas recently in the last couple of years a one two two we've had those corners and we've been able to trap a little bit more so again which do you want to have a containing press versus an aggressive press? And some coaches may find ways of, of being a 2 to one being an aggressive press on that one as well. So in terms of our half-court alignments and the pressure that we put on this. So now again, defending two, 
keeping the gate closed. So again, we dictated the momentum space on this because we left them four feet outside it because we had two defenders here. Our fence is split right now. So now we've got to really recover on that in terms of our forwards. And, you know, that wasn't a great closeout and we got lucky with the shot. But again, we hedged, been aggressive, the fence is split, we get a deflection, and now we're able to run from that. So how are you protecting yourself when you split your fence and therefore, you know, there's gaps there for people to penetrate it? What are you looking to achieve on that? Full court alignments. So as I said, we're, we're, we like to press, difference between man to man and zone. So right here, we're in a run and jump. Again, we're being very aggressive. This defense is split. So what's the recovery like on that? On this one, we didn't finish the layup. We get a free throw next on that very possession and we're right into it again. We do a better job on this one in terms of punishing the def or the, the offense when they turn it over. But again, we didn't do a great job on that trap right there but we were in a good enough position that the fence was able to sink in and protect us on that. And then we get a buzzer beater on, on, on that. This one here, again, we don't do a great job on this. Our gates are open, we're reaching, and now again, we're penetrated on the fence, but our catch-up step was better. We break the fence. Again, we're looking for deflection. So how can we, and what's your rules on that? When, the, when you get beat on the front line, what's your rules? We open the gate here. We're in big, big trouble on this one but we use our catch-up step to get back in front. Now we get back control a little bit. We're going to break the fence again, and we switch on that. Now, for us here, we did a poor job because we rarely go under, if ever go under. So now all of a sudden, we're, we're in something that we never really practiced. But Dave does a good job of keeping the gate closed, um, and now it's a contested shot as opposed to an open shot. So again, the big thing for us is when the fence breaks, how are you dictating the gaps in the fence to rotate when you're in a mismatch in terms of three of their um, players against two of your players? And what are you doing in those situations? So last thing here, um, an example of our defensive alignment and our offensive alignment. So that's why at the beginning we spoke about having a defensive line, but also having a primary offensive alignment. And you'll see here, we get an uncontested three, but you look at all the players where they're running to and we've the two corners flattened we the two trailing forwards but they're on the pipeline so for me having that primary alignment all the time is crucial to be able to have that momentum and that tempo that you want to play at um for, to to punish the defense when you have the advantage for me when you don't have a primary alignment i think it causes a bit of confusion and some people say let them figure it out but for me, it's the only time of the, of the offense where I think in recent years, we've had that deliberate element of primary alignment. We're able to run in that. And then how do we play out of that primary alignment? So one last clip. So here we're in our defense. One of the few times we're in, we're in zone. And now we give up too much space to get the shot off we get lucky with it but now here you see our two guards getting to the long corners or trailing forwards on the pipeline and now we're creating and we attack the space with momentum and we're the ones dictating the the, the tempo of the game and that for us is how we want to play but as, a, as some of the questions i posed throughout it throughout this presentation is how do you want to take advantage of the momentum space when defenders aren't in taking away passing lanes and they allow you to catch it easily. You know, what's your philosophy on that? We don't like putting too many dribbles on, on players because I believe that if when we put, when players over dribble, it just kills the momentum of, of what we're trying to do and the fluency of what we're doing. So, um, so thanks for having, thanks for having a listen. Hey coach, Mark Hart here with System Basketball. On today's video, we have coach Paul Kelleher of the Ireland national team 18U head coach. He's going to be sharing with us how to build your offense through tempo. 